Today I have for you over 50 tips and tricks for the new city builder game Farthest Frontier. If you enjoyed today's video and would like to see more videos like this on Farthest Frontier, please do consider liking and subscribing for more, it truly is greatly appreciated. When starting the new game, you have the choice of a lot of different settings. Essentially this here is easy, Trailblazer is medium and Vanquisher is hard difficulty. On top of this you can choose the map size and the name of your town which you can just randomize or you can type in a name that you like. If you select pacifist mode right here then it will be more focused on the city building and you won't get raiders or angry animals trying to kill your citizens. You can also choose the terrain and as it tells you on these different ones these terrains all have different difficulties and different numbers of resources. If you select advanced settings you better go through and choose the different difficulties for each of the different areas such as raiders and resources. You'll also be able to enter a seed up here so if you want to play the same seed as one that you've found online but do bear in mind that the seed whilst geographically the same will not have the same resources in the exact same place or numbers. Once you load in your map you'll have to choose where to place your town center and you can have a good look around the map and see the resources and the terrain. If you're unhappy with the map you've been given you can press escape and click right here to re-roll the map. This will keep all of your settings exactly the same but just give you a new map without you having to go all the way back to the main menu and start everything over again. At any time during the game if you feel you've messed up with your building placement and things like that you can also do this restart map right here to restart the exact same map over again. When looking around your map you may want to make a note of any interesting resources you find as once we do place down our town center the fog of war will creep in around it. This will of course reduce the visibility so it might be worth just taking note of anything that is nearby that you might want to build out to or go and explore. As for your town location I recommend early game you are near the water and if you can find a shoal of fish that's even better. The water will provide you the ability to fish even without this shoal of fish so you could just fish like on these areas right here which is why I recommend that you're definitely near to the water but the shoal of fish will provide you with an extra amount of fish from that area. Other good things to be nearby include deer because of course they're going to give you a lot of food and also the animal hides which are used for other things. This willow right here is also quite useful as it is used in making baskets meaning all your citizens will be able to carry more resources and being near things like the greens here and berries are also very useful again just looking at the early game food. In Farthest Frontier you do have to build on flat areas so if we were to start our town around here somewhere or try to you see that you know it's all red around here so what I wouldn't want to do is go ahead and put my town center like right here and then I wouldn't be able to build anything around it. So do make sure when you build your town center you've got it on a nice flat area with a lot of flat land around it so you can get started quickly. Two other things that can help you with your town location is if you press F you can bring up the fertility levels. The greener an area is the more fertile it is. So I wouldn't want to build my town center right on top of this green area but I might want to build it nearby and then I could have my farms in that area where they're still near the town center and they're on fertile soil. Also if we press I we bring up the water tables and again having a decent amount of water available nearby is going to be useful. Many buildings need water not least of all are all your houses for your citizens so having the water levels good nearby means you'll have more options as to where you build your wells and your buildings. Once you've settled on a location you can see here what I mean about how the fog of war comes in so you won't then be able to see the resources that you previously could on the map. To harvest resources you can click hotkey H or click down the bottom right here where it says harvest resources. You'll see here you have an option you can uncheck as many of these as you like so you select what it is you want to harvest then simply drag it over the area that you want to harvest the resources. These resources then get a white outline around them showing you which ones you're going to harvest. If you want to prioritize a certain resource, so for example this rock here if I was low on stone, I can go ahead and click it and click prioritize. You can also remove it as a target if you don't want to harvest it. When I go back to click on harvest resources it shows me everything that is set to be harvested and if this area was a mistake I simply hold down shift and then drag and drop over this area. If we select another area here under harvest resources you can see everything goes white. Now if I select it so that only trees are checked and I hold down shift and drag and drop again, you'll see that only the trees get removed and everything else in this area will still be harvested. Early game, you just want to harvest all the resources that are near your town center and then they will bring those resources back to your town center and get on with constructing it. If you press F4, you can get a more detailed view of the resources. So if I zoom in on this area right here, you'll see we can see that we've got eight willow there, 16 there, we have 25 greens here and so on. If I press F4 again, they go off completely, press it again to go back to the default view which shows you the resource but not the number. So having this view right here can be useful for you to see exactly how many resources are in an area. Planning out your town with a road grid can be useful. If you press N you can open up the building road tab and I like to build roads just around my town center when I get started. This means that your citizens will move faster around the town center which will always be the busiest place of your town but will also help you with building out a road grid. From this initial building around the town center I can go off in this direction here, I can go off in this direction over here and so on and so forth. So at this stage you end up building a bit of a tic-tac-toe board of roads but this is going to be really useful for you just gridding everything out, keeping everything organized in your town. To start building, you can click the button down here for the building menu or hot E B, and you have an option to select what type of category of building you want to build. One of the first things you're probably going to want to build
build is some food production buildings such as hunters cabins and forager shacks. When you want to place a building, you'll see that there's a little arrow right here pointing in the direction it recommends that it faces the road. You can rotate the building by pressing tab by default and you can select which way you want it to be facing. You'll see the arrow here points towards the road. If we press R twice, it's now facing away from the road. This does not affect the productivity or efficiency of the building, it's merely an aesthetical change. As I move my forager shack around the screen right here, at the top you can see here all the different resources that it's showing me I have. This can be just a quick gauge when you're looking where to build it because I can see over here I've got this one resource whereas if I come like over here I've got three and in some areas I've got four resources so obviously those would be better areas to build. The yellow ring around the building is its work area but this can be moved later on once the building is built. When you see these blueberry bushes in game if you click on them this button right here allows you to move the blueberry bush. If I press Z it's going to take me back to my town center then I can scroll out here and find a good location for this and if I want to say place it here I just left click and you get this little work area which means that the blueberry bush is going to come here. So you can collect a load of those around your town and place them in a little area really close to your town to get a very efficient blueberry farm going on to get a lot of food very fast. Early game it's a good idea to build one of these very quickly. It is a firewood splitter. This is found in the building menu under resources and it is the second one on tier one the firewood splitter. This is because people will get cold and die through the winter if they do not have enough firewood. In the same section two more across is the tannery. This is also good to build early on as it will produce clothes for your citizens. This will help them not only to survive the cold but to work long through the cold, improving the productivity of your town. It's a good idea to prioritize food early game, and one of the best ways to do that is by hunting deer. You can see just here I have a hunter's cabin, and they will obviously hunt any nearby deer, like these deer over here. Now by pressing the F4 we've got the number up, but you can also just click on them if you haven't done that, and it will tell you the number of deer nearby. When this gets low, so when it gets to about two for me, I like to stop hunting them for a while so I don't over farm them. When you do this you'll see their population will increase again, and this will net you more food in the long run. It's a great idea to also build fishermen huts early on into the game as they'll also provide you with a lot of food. When a fisherman's hut is placed, the work area by default will be centered around it. This is often not a good idea. If we click this button up here, we can retarget the work area and we can select somewhere much better for it. Down at the bottom of the screen here, we see all of the information such as the productivity, the fishing areas and the fish count. By playing around with that a little, we can find the best location for us to build that and put the work area there. Whilst it's good to fish near a shoal of fish icon like this one you see right here, you don't have to do this in order to still get a good amount of fish. When it comes to fishing huts, if you can find these little corner areas here, they're often better for you than these straight areas. Again, if I retarget this work area, you can see that if I go along the straight right here, we've got a productivity of 110% and nine fishing areas. Once we get that into the corner, we can get this way up. And in fact, if we get it to the absolute best place, we get 200% productivity and 18 fishing areas. Efficiency is important through this game, but especially early on when you're really going to need that extra food. Note also that once your hunters have been hunting for a while, it's going to be a good idea to build a Fletcher building. I built my Fletcher building here, so it's nice and central to the town and the reason we need it is because the hunters will use the bow and arrows that the Fletcher building creates. Like all buildings you can add and remove workers here by clicking these plus and minus buttons. It can also be a good idea to keep an eye on the travel time down at the bottom of the screen here and make sure that whoever's working this area hasn't got to travel too far as this will reduce their efficiency. If they are traveling too far you can just remove them and then choose someone new to go in there. You should also build a smokehouse as soon as possible as this will smoke the food and make sure that less of it spoils. Once you are collecting willows with your foragers, be sure to build the basket shop and make baskets as your villagers will then be able to carry more and it makes them more productive. A cobbler shop is a great idea too as it gives your citizens shoes and this will make them faster so more efficient and working better but also they'll get less injuries putting less of a strain on your healthcare. I always like to keep the cobbler and the basket shop nearby as it's something that all citizens will use. In terms of building them they're in the tier 1 resources section under the build menu. To get a quick overview of your town if you press P you can see the number of workers you have here in the laborers section as well as the number of people doing all the different jobs in your town. In the top right, you can also allocate more or fewer builders. And this number right here where it says laborers, these are the ones going around harvesting resources and taking materials to and from different places. If this number is in white, it means you have a good amount for your town. But if it goes to red, it means the game is suggesting that you should have more laborers in your town. If that is the case, you could in this screen, for example, go to somewhere like this, the firewood splitter, where there's two or more people and click the minus button. If we minus one person here, then we go up to 18 people here. From time to time, you may want to move buildings, especially things like this right here, your hunter's cabin, as the deer move. In the top right here, you can click to salvage the building, but if you do that, you'll only get 50% of the resources, so it's much more efficient to just click here and relocate the building. This will take some work time, but you will not lose any resources. You simply click relocate, and then choose the new location where you want it to go. To explore hidden land for new resources, like these dark areas right here, you can click this button down at the bottom of the screen, or hotkey E. You can then left click to set little flag points in these dark areas, and then they'll become explored, and you'll see what resources are in them, and what the land looks like. Once you're away from your town, if you get a bit lost, 
lost and you need to find your way back, you can either click this flashing button down here or hotkey Z and it will center on your town center. As your town grows, you'll need to build a healer's house. This is in the tier two of amenities and services. However, you can see that it does cost 30 gold per month to upkeep. So once you first build your healer's house, it's an idea to turn it off until someone gets sick, at which point you turn it back on until that person has been healed and then turn it off again. This will greatly reduce the cost you're spending on healing your citizens early on into your development. It's important that you build your houses in desirable areas that are near a marketplace and also leave space around them. This is so that in the build menu you can go to decorations and build things like gardens around them. This will improve their desirability which increases citizens happiness and also makes sure new people are coming to the town. Do make sure you always have more houses than population when you want your town to grow so that there is room for new people to come. It's a good idea to build a composter early game. It does have a monthly cost of four gold but it is going to be very useful. This can be found in the build menu under resources of the tier one resources. There you go, the compost yard. When placing it, you'll see it does heavily reduce desirability if not placed in a good area. The composters will need to go to your houses to fetch the human waste and then bring it back to the composters, which will eventually turn into fertilizer. This does take a long time, so the earlier on in the game you can get this done, the better. And the fertilizer will then be used on your farms, so it's a good idea to have the composter near to the farm area. Be sure to build a well near your houses as they will need water. The well will also be used when a building catches on fire later on in the game to put the fire out. Again, by pressing I, you can see the best places to build a well in your town. If you click this button down at the bottom here, you can see the resources that you have in storage in your town. It'll also show you how full each of your storage areas are. Note on the build menu under storage, you have different options for storage, but different items will store different things. So the stockyard stores building materials such as your stone, logs, planks, things like that. The root cellar is a great place to store food to prevent it from spoiling. So you want to build one of those near your house. Like I've built this one here near all of these houses. And then you have the storehouse and that can store everything. However, if you store food in the storehouse, it will spoil faster than if it's in a root cellar. When it comes to making farms, it's a good idea to build fence around your farms. If you go to the build menu and walls and roads, a simple fence right here will do. This is simply to make sure animals cannot get into your farms as they'll go in and they'll eat the crops. Do make sure you also build one of these things though, a fence gate. This will allow your citizens to get in and out. If you found you accidentally placed a lot of fence in the wrong area, you want to go ahead and click on the X button down here. You can then drag and select over here and you'll see it selects all these fences right here. And you can then choose to either rebuild them, salvage them, or upgrade them. You see the rebuild option is grayed out because they're not damaged and we're not at a stage where we can upgrade them yet, but we could salvage them if they're placed in the wrong area. This just saves you having to click on each individual fence and then click salvage. If you'd rather just clear an entire area, you can press C or click this button down here and it brings up all of this. You can then choose what you want to clear. So if you were doing the fences, you just select walls and go ahead and clear the area. Do note that clearing trees and bushes and things like that can be useful for gathering resources, but it will mean that they do not grow there ever again. The only way to change that would be if you were to plant them yourself, which you could do under decorations. You'll see here you can plant things like birch trees, maple trees, oak trees, spruce trees, and juniper bushes. Farms are a good food source throughout the game. However, they are very labor intensive early on in the game. So you want to wait until you have a really good population where you've got everything else being worked on and have plenty of spare laborers before you start farming. The hunting, fishing, and gathering that you're going to do will be enough to get you enough food early on into the game. So long as you make sure you're building them in smart areas and being smart with moving the work areas when needed. I do have a full farming guide on my channel if you're interested, but just a few quick tips for now in this video. On a farm right here, you can see you have things at the weed level and the rockiness as well as the fertility. And obviously you want the fertility to be as high as possible with the weeds and rocks as low as possible. Now again, when we build a farm, we do want to press F and build it in the greenest area we have available to us. However, it can be improved along the way as well. So if I click here to add in crops, this screen comes up and we can add in this right here if we want to, and we can drag where we want that to go in the year. But this will do some farm work, which reduces the weed level and the rockiness. If you just out and out want to improve fertility, then you can go ahead and plant these things right here. These are clovers and all they do is improve the fertility, but they do a very good job at that. A more balanced approach would be to plant something like these beans here or these peas right here because they will give you the crops, but also they improve fertility a little bit as well. Again, I have a full farming tutorial on my channel and that will go into everything in much more depth if you're interested. You want to build your marketplace early on into the game as it sort of dictates where you're going to build the houses. You want houses to be in this area of effect of the market because it improves their desirability, but also the market will deliver results resources to these houses, which frees up the time of the workers that live in these houses, making everything more productive and increasing happiness. By default, when the marketplace has been placed down, you'll have these food things here all selected. So if I go ahead and click these, then you'll see that they will get selected. You want to make sure that you uncheck all of these and then go ahead and remove the worker by hitting the minus key and then add in a new worker. If you don't change the worker, then it won't realize that you've removed all these food items. And the reason we remove them all is because food will spoil in the marketplace quicker than it will in, for example, the root cellar. And again, we're going to prioritize making sure we have root cellars built near our houses and that's where we want 
the food to be stored so that it doesn't spoil. Building a graveyard is a great idea to do reasonably early into the game as when people die they do need somewhere to be buried. Do bear in mind that at the time of this video graveyards cannot be destroyed or moved so when you place it down early on in the game it's going to be there forever. As such you just want to make sure you're placing it somewhere that you're very happy with. When a building catches fire they'll go to the nearby well to collect the water and then put that fire out. As such having wells dotted around your town is a good idea so that when this happens the damage to the houses is minimal. Even with this well quite nearby where it is right here you'll see that the fire has managed to do a lot of damage to these houses and it's also spread quite fast to other houses. You can avoid this happening by having good access to your wells like roads and things like that and having quite a few wells placed around the town. Otherwise you might find yourself in this situation right here where half of your town is burning down and that really sucks. Bear in mind as you play through the game when you click on your roads that you've already built you'll be able to click to upgrade them if you wish. Upgrading roads is a great idea because it means your villagers will all move faster. However by this stage of the game you're probably used to using the hotkey N to get the roads up and place them down. You must remember that even when you have access to better roads pressing N will only bring up the dirt road and not the newly upgradable road. In order to access that go into the build menu to walls and roads and then you'll see right here this cobbled road at tier 2 will be available to you. And this of course is the upgraded road that you want to be using as soon as you can for that extra productivity. My final tip is don't expand too quickly. This can be very tempting especially when you're new to the game. I remember doing it myself several times where you accept in villages when you don't really have the resources for them or you upgrade your town hall especially on combat mode as soon as you get to tier 2 you're going to have a lot more raids and things like that. So I suggest you have all of your tier 1 things built with a good amount of labourers and a good amount of food before you advance. This is because you're going to need a lot of labourers and workers to do a lot of the building for your defences and your tier 2 buildings that are going to help you with the tier 2 challenges. Guys I really hope at least some of these tips were new to you or helped you out in some way. If they did please do consider liking and subscribing it really is greatly appreciated. There's plenty more Farthest Frontier content on my channel if you want to check it out but for now I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.